Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to configure a Cisco switch to connect remotely using SSH. And uh, this is a switch, but this can also be applied to a Cisco router or a Cisco firewall. And SSH is recommended in production. If you are in your lab, you can use Telnet, which is, by the way, not secure. Everything is plain text. But if you are in production dealing with critical devices or critical systems, you need to use SSH for remote connectivity. We already have console access to this device and we did that in a previous lesson actually this lab here is one of the many labs that i'm creating on kbtrains.com for the course on the ccna 200 301 so if you are trying to start your career in the tech or you're trying to boost your career by taking and passing the ccna certification the course goes from zero to engineer check it out on kbtrains.com so i showed you in the previous lesson how to connect using console so now we have the console connection to this uh, device here it's right there okay so we can log into it and make sure that we have an ip configured so that we can connect to my desktop that i have here from where we're going to launch the ssh connection to this device and talking about ssh these are the different commands that we're going to use today first of all we need to create an enabled password when you are connected to your SSH session, you cannot go in the enable mode if you don't have a password in it for security reasons. So when you connect with the console cable, you can go there without any problem. But if you are remote, you need to, um, to have an enable password. And then after that, we're going to create some users, just a single user for test. I'm going to create a user, I'll call him KB Trainings with a password. And after that, we need to change the host name of our device because this is very crucial when we're going to create the key. The host name and the IP domain name are going to be used. And then I will assign the switch to an IP domain name that I'm going to call kbtrainings.local, which is just a random domain name that I made up. And then we're going to create the RSA keys. The keys are going to be used for encryption for our SSH session. And uh, this is the command to create the new keys. After that, we can change the version of the SSH to version 2, which is more secure. And then we'll have to go in the VTY line I usually go 0 to 15 to make sure that we are using local users. So we're going to say login local for the switch to use the users that we created locally. I have access to the switch here, as I said. All right, so now the switch is asking if you want to do some initial config. I'll just say no. I'll do everything manually. And we are in. One of the things I want to do is make sure we have an IP address and we can ping or we have connectivity with my desktop. So I'm going to connect this ethernet cable to the port fast ethernet one here and by the way let me look at the vlans this is a brand new switch not new but there's no configuration here so we have all the ports that are in the vlan number one so we're going to configure the interface vlan number one to be our management um, interface and if you don't want these notifications to mess with you when you're tapping your command you need to go under um the config mode and because we are connected with the console cable i'll go under line console zero and i'll just do logging synchronous and that's enough to avoid those uh, those notifications so now let's go and configure the nfs vlan one nfs vlan one i'll give it an ip address of 192.168.1.99 and i'm going to make sure that the switch will be in the same network as my computer so the subnet mask is at slash 24 i usually do no shut just to make sure it's up and that's it let's see if we can ping our device ping 192.168.1.100 this is the ip of my desktop i cannot ping it and i think i know why we need to go on the device itself and do ip config just to confirm the ip address we have 192.168.1.100 which is good and one other thing is that if we look at powershell um if i run this command here that is going to show me the different network profiles i have you can see that this connection is considered as public that's why the computer is protecting itself and doesn't accept any ping by the way let's see if i can ping the switch from the desktop ping 192.168.1.999 it's working so i know that the computer can reach the switch but it doesn't want to accept the connection from the switch and this is the command i use to change this network which is unidentified to change it to private 
once I do this, it's going to be private and my switch can now ping my computer. Yes, now it's successful. So now what we have to do is make sure that our switch is ready for the SSH connection. I'm going to create the enabled password. Oh, let's go under the config mode. Enable password. And the password is kind of obsolete. I'm using this because it's a lab. Now it's recommended to use enable secret to create a password that is uh, very secure. But here I'm going to use just enable password and I'll give it the password of Cisco for the enable. And then after that, I need to create a user called KB Trainings and a password for the user. The password will be Cisco. And then after that, I will need to change the host name of my device. Right now it's called Switch. I need to call it SW1. And as I said, I also need to assign it to a domain name. So I'll do IP domain name called KB Trainings.local. And after that, we need to create the crypto keys or the keys that are going to use for um, encryption. The command is crypto key generate RSA. I'm going to create some RSA keys. And it's asking me for the length of the key or how many bits do I want to use. I'm going to use 1024 just because it's shorter. But I can use uh, 2048 or whatever because 2048 on this device will take a while to, to create the key. So now the keys are being generated and it shouldn't take a long time. All right, so now that we have the keys generated, we can see that there is a confirmation saying that SSH has been enabled. So we can then change the version, IP SSH version to version two, which is more secure. And then I need to go in the VTY line to tell my switch to use local users for authentication. So I go 50, VTY line 0 to 15, login local. Okay, once I do that, we should be ready for a new SSH session. Let's go ahead and launch a new session from here. The IP is 192.168.0, no, that one, that 99. It's SSH going to the switch, open. It's asking me if I'm trusting the key that is coming from the switch and I'm just going to accept it once. Uh, let me increase the size of the font here to maybe 24, 24, 26. Okay, so login as KB Trainings. This is the user that we created. Password Cisco. And notice that when you tap the password, it doesn't show up. Oh, I think I tapped a wrong password. Okay, so with the right password, I'm in. Here I can do enable and type Cisco as the password. I am in again. If I do show users, it's going to show me the different sessions that we have to this device. We can see that the console session that's in the back here is active and the store is on the session where I'm connected. This is my session right here. It's trying to figure out what's the location. And after a moment, my IP address should come here. The IP of my desktop should uh, show up here. Yep, it's right there. And if I do the same thing on the console session, you can see that the star is on the console zero. So we have console zero and VTY zero. All right, guys, that's all for this lesson here. Now we are able to connect to the device using SSH. And again, we had to go with the console cable to be able to set an IP on the device itself. Some devices or some other brands, because here we're talking about Cisco, but as an engineer, you should be able to manage or to deal with any brands or any model of device. So some other devices can come with an IP already configured for management. You just need to know exactly what you're dealing with and how to do initial config on that device. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you liked the video, like it on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. Also, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you like this video, you can also like the installation of my home switch that I'm going to leave right here. You can go and check it out. And the whole playlist is in the description. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, and bye.